Hi everybody, this is Sean Holsinger from HolsingersFlyShop.com Bringing you another fly tying video. Today I'm going to tie a really cool looking caddis. Um, tying it with Kylie's nymph skin. It makes a great caddis material. Really translucent. And you can tie this in green or clear or even the gray would look good too. But uh, I'm going to tie it in green just because. And I'm going to show you some things I showed you on Kylie's Nymph Skin and Caddis before, but I'm going to add a little step to it and make it a flashback. So this is going to be a flashback Caddis, what we're going to call it. Um, like I said, change the colors. If you use the white or the uh, natural latex color, change your color of thread underneath it and you'll get different colors to it. You can change, make a hot spot under it, inside the the nymph skin whatever you want to do there so go back and watch that video if you want to know how I did that so anyhow let's get into tying this here's your picture of the fly and the material list to tie it Okay, here you see in the vise is the flashback caddis. It's a really cool looking caddis pattern, got some flash to it, some ribbing, and a nice collar with the CDC and the dub on it. So let's get into tying it here. Let's put our hook in the vise. For the hook, I'm using a fire hole 315 in a size 12. You can tie this a little bit smaller if you want. Tie it in a 10 if you want even. And uh, for thread, doesn't not a real, real big deal. I'm going to tie it. Actually, I'm going to tie it with an olive. I have an olive threaded up here, and that'll look a little bit better. Brown would have been okay. It would have made my caddis just a little bit darker, but still green. Anyhow, we're going to put some uh, 140 denier olive thread on there. All right, the next thing I'm going to put on, I'm going to tie this in layers. So you always want to stop, start with the top layer first, and my top layer is going to be the flashback. So for the flashback, this is a kind of foil... It is Peacock Flashback, and it comes in a sheet, and I dropped it here, I don't see it right now, oh here it is, there it is, comes in a nice green sheet, and you have to cut, cut it off in strips, that's the only thing that's kind of annoying about this, but I love that you see the flash in it, the mirror flash to it, I love the color of it, I love the flash, that's why I like to use it, but you do have to trim it to the right width, which is, you know, like about an eighth of an inch wide. I'm going to put that on and I'm going to tie that back around the bend. I'm going to make a little bit long body on this one so I have room to get all my material on there. Okay, then I'm going to put on my ribbing. For ribbing, I'm going to use two pieces of wire. One is a chartreuse small and the other one is a black small ultra wire. Just your regular old ultra wire except chartreuse and black. I'm going to take two pieces tie them on both at the same time and uh, you can tuck them up inside the bead there if you want and just wrap it back there to where you stop that foil at okay cover that up now next thing we're gonna do is put the Kylie's nymph skin on and this is the green color and we're just gonna tie it down once I get it tied on here I'm gonna pull it and stretch it out and stretch it back to the back okay and then once I get it back there we're going to wrap it up to the front and then if you have a rotary vise you can switch to your rotary vise like I'm going to and you can wrap this up pretty quickly now you're going to overlap each turn and you're going to make a rib with this you'll see that you're going to over wrap it and you know evenly space it as you go up the hook okay and as you get up there you're gonna have a little bit more I'm gonna add just a little extra at the top just to you know to even it out gets so it gets a little bit bigger as it goes up then we're gonna wrap this off okay now the next thing we got to do is we got to pull this peacock flash up over the top and I want to pull it up over and I want to keep it on the top so I'm going to pinch it down here and we're going to tie that down into place now once I get it tied down I can I like to tie back wrap it bend it back over and tie it down again just holds it in place even a little bit better 
then we need to put our wire on and I'm going to hold these side by side we're just going to make a nice rib up here I'm not really following the rib of the nymph skin because I can't see it real well I'm just kind of making nice even wraps going to get about six or so up through there and then we'll tie it off okay and then I helicopter these off one at a time it's just a little easier than trying to do two at a time Okay, the last thing we're going to do is use a CDC feather, okay? Now you see here I grabbed it by the tip and I pulled all the CDC fibers back so they stand straight up and down on the shaft. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of dubbing and I'm going to lay it right on one side of it. So let me do that real quick. And for dubbing, I'm using some uh, Davy Whitlock's SLF dubbing uh, pattern blends and I'm using the Helgramite color, which is a dark color. So any nice dark color dubbing will work fine. This has a little bit of green mixed in with it, which is great for this pattern because of the greenness. So I'm just going to go thin on this, not a whole lot. And I want to stretch it out and I want to make it the same length as the length of that CDC feather. Okay, so there you see it matches up to the same length. And I'm just going to set it on top of those CDC fibers, just like that, alright? Now I'm going to take and I'm going to put this in my clamp. This is a Petrojohn tool. Okay, I'm just going to clamp these down in here. And when I clamp that, you can see how much room I leave between my clamp and the shaft of the feather here, okay? I want to cut this off and I'm going to make a dubbing loop and that's going to be the part that I'm going to tie down in the dubbing loop. So, I'm going to trim this off right up next to that shank. And the best part about doing it this way and not using the magic tool from Petrojohn is I get two flies out of this. Now I'll set this piece aside for the next one. Now I got all these lined up here and you can see here they're lined up and sticking out the top just like that. Next thing I'm going to do is make a dubbing loop. And I'm going to get my dubbing twister. And just like I always make a dubbing loop, just put it in there wrap it around the head once or twice and then I'll go once around my thread and then you see here how I created the loop in my thread there okay I'm gonna sit I'm gonna sit this I'll look at you up here I'm gonna sit this in the V of the thread there and then I'm gonna slide my finger out of the hole out of the thread and I'm just gonna pop it right out Okay, you can see how, you can see there kind of, how it sits in there and it's halfway through, okay? So, now next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, I slipped out of my loop there a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to stick my finger right behind all those fibers. And I'm going to hold it in place while, with my bottom thumb, I'm going to twist my dubbing twister here, okay? Some of you might not have it on the stick here like mine is. You just twist it. But I'll just give this a couple twists, and I'm going to let go of it. And you can see how it made a dubbing brush out of it, okay? See how it makes a nice dubbing brush? That's the goal we're looking for. Now we're going to wrap this around. We're just going to palmer this forward. And as I do it, I'm going to tease the fibers backwards to make a nice color. Just going to get about three wraps on there. And then I'll be right up to my bead. And we're going to tie it off. You see it doesn't take a lot of wraps. And you can see there too that it doesn't take a lot to make a nice thick collar on here. Like one side of that CDC feather is ample. So just going to take, pull that back a little bit. Make a couple wraps and tidy it up a little bit. And then we're going to hit it with a whip finish. And there, that is all that's to this nice easy caddis pattern. And it took me a couple minutes to tie. I can hammer a bunch of these out. And I like fishing them. Also, don't be afraid to add a little bit of lead weight underneath here. I didn't on this video. Add a little bit of weight to it. It'll help you sink a lot faster. But it's all already, you know, a nice... Um, got a nice silhouette to it not much to hold it back when it's sinking on if you're fishing as you are a nymph 
So give that fly a try, guys. You see that nice flash to it, and it's going to work for you. Okay, that wasn't that hard of a fly to tie. A couple different techniques maybe than what you're used to, especially that CDC collar on there. But it makes a really nice collar, and you can use it on a lot of different flies. You could even use that on a wet fly if you want, you know, to make like an emerger. But it just gives it a nice buggy looking look. That's why I like doing that. And uh, you can use, like I said, in the video here, I actually use my uh, Petrojean tool. But you can use just a simple clip if you have the um, if you have the other clips they're fine they work just well just great too and uh, you don't have to get fancy with the magic tool or whatever like you, you can use you'll get a lot more fibers in there I actually like doing it the way I showed you here with only using one side of the CDC fiber it doesn't make it too bushy and uh, doesn't overpower the caddis. So give it a try. I really like the fire hole stones. You know, they just come out here not too long ago. Trying to make use of them in my videos, and this is a great example of it. Anyhow, don't forget, guys, we got that new podcast out there, Bugs and Beards. Um, if you like listening to podcasts, go try ours out. We do a lot of tires and a lot of competition fishermen. So we and we try to cover, you know, what you want to know about a lot of competition stuff like. Uh, techniques and things like that to help you catch more fish when you're on the water and you know I, I also have a lot of tying friends so we'll sit down with a lot of my tying friends and discuss how they got into it and why they tie what they like to tie and things like that so until next time guys please stop over at our website wholesingersflyshop.com to get all the materials to tie this and uh, don't forget, if you want to reach out to me, if you want to suggest a video for me to tie, suggest a fly to tie, I get a lot of suggestions, and that helps me out a lot because I have a lot of videos now. And uh, it just makes it hard to come up with new content all the time. So please email me, holstingersflyshop at gmail.com. Shoot me a suggestion for a fly to tie on the video. If there's something you want to see, a technique or something, let me know. It'll help me out and help you out in learning how to do it. So, until next time, guys, please get on our social media sites, check us out, and all the normal stuff. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And I'm Sean Holsinger.